What we've got here is a, a simple mechanical demonstration of what a cigarette contains. And to show you this, we've got a rubber bung with a hole in it, a clean piece of cotton wool, which I'm going to put in here. a cigarette and a squeezy bottle. We're going to smoke the cigarette in a fume cupboard because cigarette smoke contains 4,000 different chemicals including formaldehyde, hydrogen cyanide, benzene and nitrosamines and none of those chemicals are good for you. So we'll do this in the fume cupboard over here. So I'm puffing the squeezy bottle to show what it's like breathing in and out through a cigarette. Keep doing that until the cigarette is completely burnt. So we'll go back over to the table and we'll have a look at what was in the cigarette. On average, a smoker can expect to lose 16 years of life compared to a non-smoker. And this simple demonstration might show you why. That's the piece of cotton wool that was clean when we put it in. And the stuff that's discoloured it is tar a combination of different chemicals and that's the tar in just one cigarette if it had been a real person instead of a squeezy bottle all of that tar would have gone into their lungs just imagine how much tar would have gone into somebody's lungs after smoking 20 cigarettes in one day and another thing about it it absolutely stinks and as soon as you touch it you absolutely stink as well Let's look at what some of that tar can do to the lungs. Now, on the outside of the lungs, a smoker's lungs look black because the tar gets in and it doesn't get out. And this picture shows the reality what a smoker's lung can end up looking like after many years of smoking. But let's have a closer look inside. When we were looking at the sheep's lungs, we looked at the inside of the airways. The airways normally produce thin, clear mucus, a sticky substance, which traps dust and germs, and then tiny hairs beat the mucus up to the mouth, where the mucus can be swallowed or spat out, but it's got rid of. It's the way the lungs clean themselves. In smokers, too much mucus is produced. The hairs die off and are no longer able to clear the mucus, so you get this thick, sticky mucus full of dust and germs, which slides down into the lungs. And that's why one of the first signs of damage caused by smoking is a smoker's cough. The smokers get this mucus stuck in their lungs in the morning and they have to clear it. In the long term though, this means that they're much more likely to get lung infections. Eventually, chronic lung infections like bronchitis can damage the tiny air sacs, the critical bits of the lungs for exchanging gases. Instead of having millions of tiny air sacs, smokers end up with a much smaller number of big air sacs. And this means that the lungs are much less able to get the oxygen that the smoker needs. And very often smokers can end up not being able to get up out of a chair. Over many years, the constant irritation of all the chemicals being breathed into the smoker's lungs can cause some cells to start to divide out of control. This is lung cancer. It kills one out of ten smokers. And this picture shows a cancerous lung. 
In all probability, this cancer spread to other organs, like this picture, which shows a cancerous liver, and it will kill the smoker. One of the chemicals that you can't see in smoke is nicotine. Nicotine is the addictive chemical. It's the chemical that makes smokers want to continue smoking. It's apparently harder to come off cigarettes than it is to come off heroin. Nicotine raises blood pressure and narrows blood vessels. Over the long term, that can damage the inside of arteries, and sometimes in smokers, it can block arteries so badly that parts of the body die off, like this is a gangrenous foot, and the gangrene has been caused because the blood supply to the foot has been cut off by the smoking. So because nicotine raises blood pressure and narrows arteries, it increases the risk of heart disease. And another chemical in smoke that has a similar effect is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide reduces the amount of oxygen that the blood can carry and that means that puts a greater strain on the heart and increases the risk of heart disease as well. Pregnant women who smoke will have babies who are smaller on average than women who don't smoke. Those babies will grow up at greater risk of serious illness later on in life.